Brixton at night is a dangerous place for a snail. You know who you are. So nervous of muggers and beggars you never look down. You walk home from the tube, your head swiveling from side to side like a security camera on speed, when above the sirens and roaring cars you hear a crunch beneath your feet. You don't even stop. I was the same till my parents died in the avalanche. Life was a journey in the dark and you didn't care what you stepped on so long as it hadn't come out of a dog's ass. Now I do look down. I stop for the snails. I walk the streets of Brixton at night, shining my torch into the darkest corners, looking for the crushed and downtrodden. And I can feel my parents looking down on me, shaking their heads in despair. Well, they've had their life, and now I'm going to share mine with the snails. Oh, and the girlfriend. At Home with the Snails by Gerard Foster, starring Geoffrey Palmer and Angela Thorne. Your meatballs are cold. This one's still alive. Shall I stick it in the microwave? What, the snail? Your dinner. Alex, there are 200 snails sliding around our flat. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? What have you got in... What, you've put a snail in the microwave. You've microwaved Keith! I didn't know it was in there. Oh, like you didn't know Julie was in the washing machine. I forgot to check your pockets. What is the point of me going out there and saving them? I don't know. I can't do this anymore. Either they go or I go. Right. Well, I'll have to think about it. Where are you going? To bury Keith. I should be offended. He's more upset at the death of a snail than of his own father. But I mean, it's all good material for the book. A postmodern narrative of guilt, grief and symbolics. The boy grows up, happily killing snails with his father in the garden. Then he rebels, moves into the shed and starts saving the snails from the evil patriarch. Well, a full-blown family feud ensues. The boy moves to London and lives happily ever after. Until his parents die in an avalanche and he goes spiralling back to his old obsession. And the really delicious irony is we're not dead at all. Though living in a one-bedroom flat with Beverly does feel like some sort of hell. Beverly! Oh, I do feel guilty. Following him around at night on his snail trail. Listening to his relationship collapse on the secret microphones we planted in his flat. Beverly! Ooh. Have you come to scrub my back? I'll break your bloody back if you don't shut up. Well, if you'd let me join the musical group. We're supposed to be dead. You can't go on stage. There'll be reviews saying how bad you were. When you walk through a storm. All right. Thank you, George. Are you going to join me? I need an office. Actually, there's that empty squat round the corner from Alex. If I could sort out the electricity... Be nice to be that bit close to my son, and that bit further away from my wife. I'd always wanted to tread the boards, but then George entered, followed by Rose and Alex screaming. Still, living with George has meant a certain amount of acting, so I've kept myself warm. And here I am, making my London debut with Highgate Amateur Musicals. Ham was founded by Roger Bigley in 1993, the same year he started growing his hair. Oh, it's now a luxuriant, thick ponytail reaching down to the small of his back. And Ham are still performing once a year in Highgate Church Hall. Every night before my eyes, I see my father's ghost arise. Up in the sky! <laughs> Roger's the writer, director and star of the show. Hamlet the musical just wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for Roger. There's the most fantastic chemistry between us. I'm playing his mother, so we have to rein it in. But there's one scene where we fold this big white sheet. And it's the way he folds, moving in and out of my personal space. 
Being a Swedish relationship counselor, I'm very open. I have this one couple, George and Beverly. We spend so long talking about me and Alex, we never get on to them. But George says it really works for him. So, how are things? Much better. Well, I've been out most evenings. Yes, it's much better. How's the boyfriend? I'm in a musical with the most wonderful director, Roger Bigley. He's a producer at the BBC. Yes, he does the Horse of the Year show. No, he's in factual entertainment. George is threatened by Roger's ponytail. All I said was it's a phallic symbol, usually employed by people with small coughs. Well, Roger doesn't need phallic symbols. He discovered Anthony Worrell Thompson, the small cook. Oh. oh. You must come to our first night, Hosanna. Beverly. Oh, yes. Uh, no, you mustn't come or bring anyone. I'd love to, but I'm supposed to maintain a professional distance. Absolutely. Is your chap still putting snails down his trousers? Well, let's not get on to Alex. No. But they're definitely a phallic symbol, in and out of their shells, like little willies. Gosh, I'm glad he's got rid of them. What? Yes, this morning. He took them all away. Oh, that's wonderful. I thought I'd go for a walk, try and work out a way of telling Hosanna I was dumping her for a load of snails. And when I got out the door, there was this snail waiting for me. So I followed him, and a few hours later we got to this house round the corner. There was no lock on the door, so I left Derek on the step and I went in. And on the doormat was a letter addressed to Mr Fisher, saying we are pleased to be able to supply you with electricity. These things seem to happen since Mum and Dad died. So I moved my snails in, hung my coat over the window, and they've had a lovely evening sliding all over me. I don't really want to put my clothes back on and go home, but Hosanna's planning some celebratory smorgasbord. Oh, she's Swedish and she's a great cook, but she's just not 200 snails. 11pm. Freezing cold outside squat while subject wallows in central heated master bedroom on first floor. I'll bet he's got his snails in there, trailing chaos all over the walls. I mean, it's great that he's lying to his girlfriend and carrying on with snails behind her back, but not in what was going to be my office. A pound of lemon infections and one chocolate smear. Two pence change. Thank you. So I was all set to inherit half of everything and expand my chocolate empire when in barrel my parents, full of the joys of spring because they're not dead after all. I'm all for experimenting on Alex, but I have a serious heart condition I can do without that sort of shock. And now I have Mum popping in every day showing off about BBC producers. I've always wanted to be a celebrity chef, like Jamie Oliver. You don't just buy the food, you buy the lifestyle, the friends, the family. I'd love to sell my family. George's dinner. Oh. oh, don't finger the tail, Bev. I've just washed it. Oh, sorry. So, just the two of us tonight. Well, we do have a young lady popping in. Hi. Oh, you're Rose, are you? Hello, Mum. What, this is your daughter? Well, 37 is my playing age. <laughs> well, Rose has landed herself the part with more lines than anyone. Oh, but you're wonderful as Hamlet. I can't fold with her. No, she's going to be the prompt. <laughs> and stage manager and general bossy boots. Here's your script, Rose. Oh, I made you some chocolates. Vanilla bites, Turkish fists. Oh, th thank you very much. Oh, my God. Mm. Mum tells me you discovered Anthony Worrell Thompson. Yes, he was behind a cooker. Well, let's get on. Mm. Oh, yes, sorry, Beth. Right. <clears throat> Act two, scene seven, Hamlet penetrates his mother's chamber. Oh, <clears throat> Oh, mother, whom I love the most, guess what? I saw my father's ghost. Oh, Hamlet, dear. Your eyes made a blunder. Yes, I pause there, Rose. You want to make a note of that. Oh, Hamlet, dear. Your eyes made a blunder. I know the line. Oh, Hamlet, dear, your eyes did blunder. Made a blunder. Oh, Hamlet, dear, your eyes made a blunder. Your father's dead and six feet under. I was pausing. I paused there, don't I, Roger? Well, I wouldn't worry. The audience will be looking at me. Well, it's me talking. Yes, and it's me standing next to you doing this. Oh, oh that's, that's brilliant. brilliant. Will you stop prompting me? 
Roger, I should warn you, Rose has done this before. Yes, she said on the phone she prompted the caretaker in sixth form. Yes, it lasted seven minutes. All the lines were there. Delivered from off stage by you. Look, Beth, no family feuds. This is ham time. Have a bit of sensitivity. Well, couldn't she be the ghost? No, her face is too red. I'm sorry, Roger. Could we fold something? Where have you been? Oh, just down the pub. It's three in the morning. Yeah, we, um, we had a lock-in. Why aren't you drunk? I uh, me? Oh, I'm, I'm very drunk. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, very drunk. Alex, who's Emma? Uh, Emma? I uh, don't know. You were calling out her name last night. Oh, Emma. Yeah, she's some girl I met. Is she nice? Yeah, she's great. You could at least lie. I am lying. There's no girl called Emma. Alex, there are stains on your trousers. Look, it's not what you think. OK, Emma exists. Did you see her tonight? Emma, yes, but the stains are Carol. You bastard. Ah! She's a snail. Carol and Emma are snails. But that'll explain the poem to Derek in your jacket pocket. <laughs> Derek's fun, yeah. He's a bit odd. I've been lying here worrying about you having an affair. Well, I'm not, am I? Well, I wish you were. Look, you said get rid of them. You didn't say stop seeing them. So you all meet up somewhere? Yeah, they've got a place of their own. What, a bush? No, not a bush. Snails don't live in bushes. They've got a house. You've rented a house for them? No, I'm not completely mad. I was given a house. Who by? Derek. A snail? No. All right, Mum and Dad. Look, there's this empty house in Abbott's Road. Look, look it's over, all right? You're not going to see them again? No, I mean, you can stay here. You're moving out? I just need my own space, with snails in it. So, Snail Boy leaves the nest to set up home with his mollusks. It's brilliant. It's a bloody disaster. I can't have him living around there. He'll be up in that master bedroom all day doing God knows what. Which is good, but my microphone's around at his flat. There's no point him having his nervous breakdown if I can't hear him doing it. To Universal Freeholds. Re your property being squatted by an unstable man with snails. There is something rotten, some old fish, bones forgotten. Oh, my. Downright odorous and smeggy. I am writing a book. Oh, George, this is Roger. How's the symbolics going? It was going rather well until my brilliant train of thought was disturbed by a long-haired, goatee-bearded drama queen and her friend Roger. Oh, Roger just came round to run me through a new song. Well, actually, I came to talk about the facial hair, so I'm glad you brought that up, George. Thanks. Oh. It, it's just not how I see Gertrude. But if we ever do the Witches of Eastwick, I'll be begging you to grow it all back. Well, I'll ask Rose what cream she uses. Oh, did I say? We're auditioning for a new celebrity chef. Oh, I'd love to, Roger. No, I was going to ask Rose. I think chocolate making could be very popular with our core audience of students. Well, lucky Rose. And she didn't even have to sleep with you. Did she? No, that wouldn't have helped. I had an eviction letter yesterday. I fed it to the snails. They'll eat paper when there's nothing else. And I can't leave the house to go shopping. And at five in the morning there were dogs barking and voices through the letterbox saying they knew this place was a squat. Oh, they didn't want to chuck me out. It was worse. They wanted to live here. So I said, yeah, man, we'll all live in a commune and cook and write poems and have wild sex. This is Derek. They didn't stay long. Derek can be intimidating. Funny look in his tentacles. I suppose a snail isn't going to be much use when the bailiffs do come knocking, but I'm not going to give in to this persecution. Not now I've worked out it's just Hosanna trying to bully me into going back. I'd like to go back. I'm going a bit stir-crazy stuck in here all day with my snails in the dark. They cut the electricity this morning. Oh, Big Dick Turpin, I am a poor nun with an empty purse. Take what you will. Right. And now we have sex? George, it's theatre. Release your imagination. Tell me what you really want to do. Go next door and work on my book. Well, you can't. I know I can't. I haven't got any material. Oh, put the mask back on. Oh, let's just get on with it. Stand and deliver. <laughs> Was that an orgasm? No, I'm being Bessie. Ride me, Dick. Jump in the saddle. Well, I will if you keep still. <laughs> I'm not chasing around the room. I'm not wildly attracted to horses, unlike you. Well, I shall tell Roger you were quite hopeless. 
Beverly, what goes on between these walls is a matter between you, me, and my readers. No, it's acting. Roger wants you to be his ghost. He says you have a ghoulish quality. I've got a book to write. You said yourself you can't do anything at the moment. Well, prancing around Highgate Church Hall with a sheet over my head isn't going to bring Alex back. You won't be wearing a sheet over your head. Roger's a master of special effects. He certainly had a special effect on you. That's why I want you there, George. For the sake of our marriage. Oh, I'm not worried. He's more interested in Rose, isn't he? Rose? Well, she can produce a walnut excretion or two, but I've been feeding a family for 30 years. I'm giving Roger titbits in between scenes. A blend of the old and the new. Nigella's tongue tortellini, Delia's braised udders, and my very own fish slop. Here's what you could have had, I tease, slipping a quick spoon into his mouth. He gets all hot and flustered and starts coughing up bits of prawn and lung like a bull at a gate. Rose. Ha! Oh, that's delicious. Such speculum. <laughs> well, I could spend all day with my face in Rose's box, but back to work. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Bev, I have to watch my weight when I've got Rose on telly five days a week. Telly? Oh, didn't she tell you? We had a look at her under the lights and she's got cult written all over her. So we're putting her on morning TV, live in the studio. Live television? And the doctors think it's safe? What do you mean? The serious heart condition. Oh, didn't she tell you? Well, I'm sorry you didn't enjoy your strawberry suppository, but you know where you can shove it. Yes, I have a serious heart condition. Thought Auntie B was supposed to champion people like me. But no, Roger says they can't invest in a brand that's only got a year to live. Which, as a money person, I respect and applaud. I was going to tell them they could forget about me prompting their show. But Mum didn't mean to ruin my life. She said she just didn't want to lose her little girl. Family's so important. Seems a shame her other child can't be there. Who is it? It's me. Who's me? Hosanna. I've got Derek with me. What? So don't try anything. Hi. Was that you with the Dick Turpin mask? What? Up the tree, looking in with binoculars. Was that you? Alex, I'm worried about you. All right, do you want to come in? Oh, mind where you're shredding. Sorry. That was Emma. Alex, you look awful. You just killed Emma. How do you expect me to look? Sorry, you can hardly see where you're... Russ! Sorry. Can you stop murdering my snails? Well, switch the light on. I don't have any lights. You had them cut off. No, I didn't. Well, someone did. If my dad wasn't dead, I'd think it was him. Maybe it is him. Alex, you're scaring me now. You're scared? He's not even your father. I'm petrified. Alex, there's something wrong with your brain. That's what he said when I came back with a 2-1. He made me like this. Well, maybe he did, but it's got out of control. I mean, look, they're just stupid phallic symbols going in and out of their shells like little boys' willies. Blimey, you sound like you've been taken over by him. Oh, no. I haven't been taken over by your father. Be gone. Out. Oh, all right. I'm going. No, not you. Dad. Your dad's dead. He's possessed you. He's the one who keeps telling you to kill snails. Yes, I can hear him telling me to leave now. Really? No. Look, I got a message from Rose. Not from Dad? No, from Rose. She's involved in some play tonight and she wants us to go along, if you fancy it. Well, I would, but there'll probably be some sort of service for Emma and Russ. Thanks for listening. I feel much better now. Oh, so do I. Your relationship counselling is really something else. So, he thinks I'm watching him, manipulating his girlfriend, driving him out of his house. Well, I am, but that's not the point. This is paranoia. This is material. Yes? Where are you? Well, I'm at home, aren't I? You just phoned me. Well, Roger wants to show you what to do. I'm not taking sex tips from a horse. Well, you haven't forgotten you're the ghost. I never said yes to that. I've got work to do. Alex thinks I'm haunting him. Well, can you come down here and haunt Hamlet, please? Wait a minute. Roger's got smoke bombs and lights and everything. I'm on my way. What do you want? No, you rang on my door. So it wasn't you that left the lettuce leaves? What? But there was a trail of lettuce leaves from outside the squat going all round Brixton and then ending up here. And where are they now? 
Oh, well, I ate them. Alex, you need help. Well, I haven't eaten for three days. Someone's trying to drive me out of the squat. And you fell for the old trail of lettuce leaves trick. Oh, no. It's a trap. They've lured me out so they can go and kill all the snails. Uh, can you come back to the squat with me? Why don't we go and see Rose's play? No, please, I'll do anything. I I'll move back in. No, you bloody won't. I'll take you back to your house and that's it. We're through. <laughs> Has anyone seen the smoke bombs? The strobe light? The special effects microphone? Or George? Oh, what the hell's he playing at, Bev? I'm afraid he might be jealous. I'll ruddy kill him. No, the guilt would haunt us. We'd never be happy. Rose, a little extra job for you. How do you fancy playing the ghost? Well, if you can trust me not to die on stage. Well, I'll be cross if you do. You're only on for a minute. Just stick this sheet over your head. No one will see your face. Oh, but that sheet's the one we fold with. We'll lose the folding. Oh, but the folding symbolises the tension between Hamlet and Gertrude. The love that dare not speak its name. Bev, the folding's gone. Will you get off my hair? Like two hours till showtime. Mind where you're... Treading, yes. There's loads of them coming down the stairs, like they don't want to be here. I know the feeling. Oh, hell. What? Look, where I'm shining the torch. They've been massacred. Oh, Alex, I'm so sorry. They've been smashed to pieces. It's going to take days just to identify the bodies. Is that one still moving? Derek! Derek's all right. Let's have a look at you, big fella. Derek's fine. He hasn't got a scratch on him. Wait a minute. Derek, what happened? What happened? I don't think shining the torch in his face is going to make him talk. You don't get it, do you? My dad hasn't possessed you. He's cleverer than that. He's possessed Derek. No, Alex. Look, I believe you. Someone's got it in for you. Someone with a very warped mind. Someone with a thing about snails. It was you, wasn't it? Me? Are you mad? This has my dad written all over it. Can you stop blaming your father? You're a big boy now, and he's got an alibi. He's dead. My father is here. I can sense him. Well, say hello to him from me. Wait, you can't leave me here with Derek. My father is here. My father is in this... Well, he's not literally in this room, but he's... standing in the garden. Alex? Dad? This is when you're meant to run screaming from the house. Are you... a ghost? Well, what do you think all the smoke and lights are in aid of? Yes, I'm a ghost. Now, bugger off. Why? Because I'm your dad and I'm telling you. Oh, some dad you are. You don't speak to me for five years and when you do, you kill my snails and tell me to bugger off. You have a perfectly good home. Is that supposed to sound scary? A very nice Ooh, home. Ooh, mummy, mummy. Oh, stop being so childish. I found this place first and I'm not sharing it with you. Why not? We're related. We can't live in the same house. It would never work. Well, some people, you know, when their parents die, they feel like they're still close to them. Well, I will be close to you. That's why I came here, round the corner. So I could watch over you. Really? Yes. Now bugger off and take your snails with you. Dad? Hosanna's <laughs> right. I am going mad. Sixty seconds till house lights down. Well, happy you've stolen my big moment. Mum, you've got more important things to worry about than a sheet. Oh, have I missed your hair? No, I just saw Alex in the audience. What? Over there, next to the Swede. That wasn't in the script, was it? Bev, don't peek through the curtain. Oh, Roger. House lights, please, and music, Val. Break a leg, Bev. Roger, I can't go on. This is no time for jokes, come on. Big breaths. Hey, big breaths. <laughs> Curtain up. Cue Hamlet and Gertrude. Is there any way you can do the show without me? Bev, you're not that bad. Friends gather round, let me try to explain. Oi! Sorry, Roger, you missed your cue. I do not miss cues. My dad's the king of Denmark, I'm a prince and a day. You shut up! Beverly, get out there, now. I can't. I'm sorry. There's someone in the audience who mustn't recognise me. What? If I'd known, I could have made myself a wig or a... Where are we supposed to find a bloody wig? If I give you mine, will you go on? What? Oh, my God. Just take it, you stupid woman. Let's get this over with. You bastard. Yo, Val, music. You're bald. Oh. You Howard and Gertrude. Oh. You bastard. <laughs> 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 and angels sing me to 
my rest. Oh, I made some cuts. Do you want to go backstage and find Rose? No, I could do with something to eat and uh, maybe an early night. I'll make you Swedish meatballs. <laughs> I miss my son, my Hamlet. In the heat of the moment, we both said things we regret. I know he didn't mean to call me an old hairy ham, and I don't really think he's a bad folder. Still, I got my hands on his ponytail, and I'm weaving the hairs into a small tea towel. It'll be a nice thing for Roger when he comes out of hospital. Something he can fold on his own. I don't know if I really saw my father's ghost, but I do know there's still a funny look about Derek. It's sort of touching that my dad's possessed this snail just to be close to me, but if he's going to go around killing all the other snails, that's no use to anyone. So I have to choose between my father and my snails. I've built a little guillotine. He had his last meal, porridge, oats and cuttlefish bone. It's good for the shell. And I stayed up with him through the night. That was nice. And when the time came to strap him into position, he didn't struggle. But now it's time for Derek to meet his maker. I'm cruel only to be kind. So, Snail Boy's back where I want him, and I'm still stuck here with Beverly. Shame I couldn't stick it at the new office. Damned crusties came back, and I just didn't have the snails to frighten them off. The girls were all over me. I couldn't get anything done. Still, the book's nearly finished. Just one big climax. That's all I need. At Home with the Snails was written by Gerard Foster and starred Geoffrey Palmer as George, Angela Thorne as Beverly, and Gerard Foster as Alex. With Miranda Hart as Rose, Deborah Stevenson as Hosanna, and Richie Webb as Roger. The producer was Jane Bertou.